Stay tuned until the end of this episode of Speedrun to find out how you can enter to win a copy of Immortals Phoenix Rising for Nintendo Switch. Thanks in part to Ubisoft Canada. Hello and welcome back to Speedrun, the fast talking video game co- uh, podcast where, yeah, Baba Booey. Cod pa- uh, Codcast? <laughs> it's Cod? like a fishing podcast. If not, that's a great name for a fishing podcast. Oh, like, welcome back to the Codcast. I nearly sneezed halfway <laughs> through doing it, but we are committed at this point. And I'm We're Jazzy. Rolling. I'm Jamie. Joining and us. And I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, laughing. I'm Jesse. <laughs> nice to meet you. So joining us today is a longtime friend of mine. We met, weirdly enough, originally in the YouTube comment section. Yes. Uh, she's a writer. She's a composer. Stock car racer. The Fox. Layla Wilson. Hi. I, I am the Fox. It's me. <laughs> Yes, you, uh, uh, and for those who are like, hey, that name sounds familiar, she literally composed the theme for, for this podcast. It's true. Oh, yeah. yeah. I recall it being pretty good. It's mm-hmm. very good. The right emails, on. Good. The emails agree. Everyone likes the, the theme song. Oh, that everyone lo- so happy to hear her. Everyone loves the theme song, like, no joke. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's really good that we're starting on this topic because uh, I'm going to go ahead and start our 15 minute timer. I'm saying how long it is so we don't get more emails about oh, it. More <laughs> emails about it. But you have done composition work, of uh, goodness, for what? Well over a decade now. Yeah. Um, I mean, are, are we talking official work on video games or how long I've been composing for? Let, let, let's talk both. Like, how long for both those? So, composing... When I was really little, neighbors across the street had this little uh, reed organ, and we'd go to visit them, and I'd, I'd always be messing around on it. And so, uh, eventually, uh, my folks were like, oh, you know, she, she really likes playing on this thing. Can we buy it? And uh, they got it for, like, oh, you know, like... 50 60 bucks maybe <laughs> and i had Aww. that in my room and i would just i kind of mashed on it and i remember my mom saying around the time i was like three four something in there she said oh, it's started to sound like music now and um from there it just kind of spiraled into whatever this is now <laughs> uh, i didn't end up working in the industry until 2011 so exactly about 10 years now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> most no- I think one of the most notable ones, I'd say, is you've done the fa- the soundtrack on uh, Freedom Planet 1, and then you, you've returned for Freedom Planet 2 as well, yeah? Yeah. In fact, yeah. there's actually... Uh... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, you going? I was just going to say, uh, I just got another song in from Sabrina for the for the second game that I'm going to be working on pretty soon. So Ooh. it's ongoing. Ooh. Also, for those wondering, yes, this is the same Sabrina that we had in a podcast just a few weeks back. So it's true. It's true. I feel like I feel like we're having like everyone who who's worked on Freedom Planet just on at some point on like unintentionally. <laughs> You've got to get you got to get Proto in here. He's great. You'd love him. I may, I honestly, I might reach out or like maybe even like one of the voice actresses like Don Bennett or whatnot. But what, what I'm saying, but this is focused on you today. Yeah. All right. And, you know, I, I got to be honest, like the soundtrack is so just amazing. But but that wasn't the first time you'd compose. If I remember, you'd done some stuff for actually some fan projects mm-hmm. beforehand. Uh-huh. Let me see. Oh, what is that called? Uh, Sonic Mega Mix. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I did some of the music for that. And, um, gosh, what else? Uh, there were a couple other fan projects I did the music for, but that, that was the one that, like, kind of sticks out for me. Uh, most of the others didn't get finished or things like that, but, uh, that one kind of is one that's referenced when people hire me. They're like, oh, Sonic Megamix, you know, you did Starry Night Zone. 
And oh, that's... wait, you, I didn't realize you did Starry Night Zone specifically. I did Starry Night Zone, uh, Metallic Base. Uh, oh, what's the second level? The Lava Marble Zone replacement Dark, level. Dark Fortress? Dark Fort- yeah, I did that. Did the boss theme. Um, I think that's all I did. And that was, and just to be sure, that was from the B5 release, right? The CD audio. I, I couldn't, I can't work with that um, 16-bit stuff. Right. But was that the one, was that the version where they were working on it and then it got leaked and then there there hasn't like been yep, updates since? Yeah, it ended up, you know, everybody kind of went their separate ways and that that's a whole story. Um, it's not anything bad. It's just like some of them went on to work on Sonic Mania and obviously that was going to take priority. Right. And then I, you know, I know like Simon, who's one of the big folks in that has since worked on some of his other projects as well. I know yeah. one of them was on Kickstarter last year and one of them was a shoot 'em up that recently got released. Yeah, he's been working his butt off and he's made some really good stuff. Mm hmm. Well, what are some of the other game projects folks may have heard your music from? Uh, Starbuster is definitely one that uh, had gotten a lot of traction. So I think people would recognize uh some of the tunes from that uh i did oh, gosh it was called miasma caves and i was really proud of my work in that one um and then the people who liked the game definitely said the music was a good part of that so that that was a really nice feeling um i'm trying to think of anything else and you know here i am on the spot like trying to think up my entire resume and i got nothing no pressure no pressure, None, pressure. no pressure no pressure here i'll throw a softball how about that okay Okay. Also, if we sound weird, it's because we're recording through OBS. It's not your headphones. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, no, you sound fine. Oh, okay. If my brain turned off for a second, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Here's Welcome the softball. Back. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back. Tell yeah. us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, Thank back. You. I'm Jamie. You just heard, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say it. I'd have to bleep it. Um, what kind of uh, tracking software? What kind of DAW? What kind of what's ah. your like workflow for making music? So I use this program called Acoustica Mixcraft that like no one I have ever met uses, and I'm pretty sure that like it it just doesn't exist, and I made it up mm-hmm. because I I haven't spoke to anybody else who uses it. But the the workflow is really similar to back when I was composing only MIDI, uh, the workflow uh, in my MIDI DAW was oh. almost identical oh. to this. So I, I kind of just got straight into it because I tried Fruity Loops and I went, damn, I ain't smart enough for this. You know, like this is way <laughs> above my pay grade. So mm-hmm. um, Mixcraft keeps it pretty simple. I've got a lot of VSTs I use, but those have changed over the years. Like. I don't use any of the stuff that I used in Freedom Planet 1 anymore, except for sometimes I still use the, the same guitars. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's, kind of, it's kind of constantly evolving. When I'm able to afford expensive stuff, I buy it, and then that kind of replaces a lot of the, the free stuff I used back then. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just mm-hmm. like a pile of VSTs. Uh, I've really been using Nexus 3 a lot lately. It's, oh, I was um, hoping you would say that. Yeah, I, I love Nexus 3. So good. It's amazing. I I definitely recommend it for anybody in the market for a VST. Uh, for those who are unaware, a VST is basically a instrument plugin for a program like FL Studio, Pro Tools, Logic, GarageBand, and Nexus specifically is a Swiss Army knife of synthesizer sound. Yes, my, yes, it is. <laughs> my favorite preset is the one called German Trumpet, and it's like the techno yeah. synth. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've got it's it's ridiculous, and I don't want to gush about them forever because they're they're not sponsoring us. But like, <laughs> but they and could. Sound like they're, but like but, they could. And they should. Us. And they should. They should sponsor this episode right here. Um, but, Jamie yeah. at Jamie at stuffweplay dot com. By the way, Jazzy yes, at stuffweplay dot com. Yeah, like we got. You know, you've got orchestral sounds. You've got, uh, I really like their synthwave sound packs because I make a lot of synthwave. 80s music is kind of like a really one of the big things for me uh, when I'm doing personal work for myself. So, um, yeah, it runs the gamut and it, it keeps up with a lot more expensive VSTs. Like, it, it can go toe to toe with them. Absolutely. Uh, the other use, uh, you ever heard of the Korg Legacy Collection? Yeah, I have. Yeah. 
Yeah, I use that a lot. The M1, the Triton, uh, Poly 6. You can actually find a lot of sound packs for that online. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all authentic, you know, sampled from, you know, the machines that were made back then. So that has also helped a lot with my synthwave stuff because I want it to sound not like music made now, but I want it to sound like it was made back then. So I try to use a lot of the original sounds and try to use a lot of the original uh I guess mood and feel uh, feels mm -hmm. a lot different between synth wave and music that was actually coming out back then. And I try to more lean into the latter. I love right. that so, so much. Just the authenticity really of that. it. Oh, okay. yeah. You know, I, I like, I really, you know, I really admire that as well because that point is less of an homage and more like the real deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of like to pretend that there are a bunch of records that somebody found in a warehouse that were made in, like, 83 or something. You realize and... you just described Vaporwave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, like, okay, so let, let me explain something with Vaporwave and, and myself personally. Um, I think it's neat. It kind of creeps me out, but it mm -hmm. just makes me want to listen to the original songs. And I know that it's, like, a, it's the same thing with Future Funk, and I know that's a very unpopular opinion, but I'm, like... My favorite genre in the world is city pop, and I just like to listen to it, like, unaltered, because I'm, like, I don't know, a hipster or really old, one or the other. <laughs> yeah. There's an album that you should totally look up that totally, like, captures that sound. And this is not sponsored. I'm just saying this. There's an album oh, called... Oh, could be. Again. Yeah. <laughs> J J uh, Jesse at stuffweplay.com for an album that came out in 95. Uh, there you go. Jazzmasters 3, Roman numeral 3 uh it is so good and it totally captures like that like w mid 90s like tokyo street funk like future what would eventually become future funk in period correct like creation oh it's so good it's so good all right got that googled up for after the podcast thank absolutely. you absolutely uh, there's mm -hmm. some uh if you really if you like city pop i can highly recommend the ost to breath of fire 3 because yes. it is straight up city pop the entire thing like it's so good they should have just kept that style for four and it would have made four less depressing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh how are we doing on the timer because i know we kind of got off on a tangent there i just want oh, to make we're, sure we're, we're, we have four we have four and a half minutes left okay. we're fine it's fantastic <laughs> You put me on your podcast, you're going to get tangents and ain't nothing going to make sense. So, you know, you just kind of kind of got to roll with it. <laughs> so, we've talked back a, in. so we've talked a bit on technical process, but I'm curious, like, what's your creative process for, you know, really, you know, not not just, you know, working on on getting the authentic 80s retro sound or even 90s retro sounds, I guess, in the case of something like Freedom Planet that. Really gives me really gives me that those uh, good Sonic CD vibes at times. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What's the creative process for getting in the the right headspace for doing that? So a lot of that is um, being familiar with the type of music that you're attempting to kind of squeeze your way into. Like if you really want to sound like you know '90s house music, like Sonic CD, you got to immerse yourself in that stuff. And it also has to be something you enjoy, I found, at least in my case. Um, if you don't really enjoy the genre of music you're making, you're going to try to turn it into something you like. So um, generally, even in those cases, like you still got to do the job. So I'll immerse myself in, you know, what whatever is needed for me to immerse myself in. But you, you listen to a lot of it, really. And it, it sticks, you know, in the back of your brain. At least that's what I do. Absolutely. And so our, let, let's talk back catalog of all of all the pieces you've done. Which ones are your favorite? Uh, uh, I'd say most of them are probably on Elantia. Uh, there's a couple on hard speed. Um, Lost Children from hard speed. Uh, Air Pressure. Um, and I think Versus Theme from Elantia. Uh, and it's millions of different names. Uh, Shifting Tides from Elantia is another one that, that's pretty up there. Um, there's a couple, uh, like, Laments theme from Elantia. Uh, Starry Night Zone, Sonic Mega Mix, Fortune Night, Freedom Planet. The entire oh, soundtrack Night's from... Good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the entire soundtrack from uh, Miasma Caves, I am 
very, very proud of. Um, you know, I, I would keep going. Um, you know, if, if you want me to, I, I could name off all my favorites, but we'd be here a while. I'm, I, I do enjoy a lot of my stuff. There's some stuff I look back at and I cringe, but mostly I, I quite enjoy it. I think that's real. I think that's really nice to hear as well because I feel like so often with creatives, a lot of creatives are like, "No, you have to hate all your old work." And I'm, I'm kind of years. Don't get me wrong. For years. Oh I'm no, I, I did to too. But I'm kind of at a point where I look at some of my my own old projects and stuff. And I'm like, you know, this wasn't this wasn't bad. This was. I would have done some stuff differently, maybe, but it's not yeah. bad. I, I think that has to do with how long you've been creating and like the maturity that you've gained over that time that you can look back and not blame your past self for doing things doing the best she could you know she's like okay i have these tools to work with i have this much knowledge this is what i'm gonna make and um you know you can't blame her for that it ain't gonna be perfect and this goes to all creators who are listening do not blame your past self for making something that your current self don't like they were doing their best that's, absolutely that's really beautiful it's uh that's how i cope with it when i'm just like oh man i, just, I don't like this one bit you know mm -hmm. and content creators out there i said this on the show before do not throw out your old work i have a whole album's worth of content of material that i made when i was a teenager that's just like mm -hmm. gone that is sage uh, wisdom right there because you can use that fortune knight I wrote that when I was 15 and no yeah. And I was like 20, oh gosh, making me do math 24 when I started working on freedom planet. And I just, I had it laying around. I have all my old middies from back then. Probably shouldn't say that. Cause now people are going to be asking, Ooh, you know, can I hear some others? And I'll be like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they are bad. But like the, the general composition was there and you can always pull from your old work just because old you wasn't very refined yet don't mean that old you wasn't good at doing what you do they right. just needed a little help that you know current you can give them right it's, i guess in a weird way it's almost like collaborating with yourself in, in yes. a way yes it is so on that note that musical note uh -huh. <laughs> We have just hit time. Layla, where can folks find you on the internet? Uh, I got a Twitter at LR Waffle uh, and my SoundCloud, which is uh, Layla Wilson with Waffle in brackets afterwards, because um, that way folks who only know me as Waffle can find me there. Uh, those are the two best places. Excellent. And then any any projects you want to plug that are coming up as well? Uh a couple secret projects but i would definitely like to plug starbuster uh and freedom planet too those are like the big ones i'm working on i also just got uh a few gigs doing some songs for havoc fox as well so i'm very happy about that um, very nice kind of keeping things rolling you know absolutely and speaking of keeping things rolling or getting things rolling a view listening right now would like to get rolling on creating a podcast a, uh, a, a podcast. Uh, Sorry, we're calling pod them podcasts now. Podcast Not a, is like a subscription uh, that. service get, that gets you podcast podcasts rather. <laughs> well, you can I check out our link, our beautiful sponsor, Podbean. <laughs> Take it away. I set it up for you. Thank you. Uh, I, ca I can't. I can't say the word podcast today. I don't know what it is. I promise. Like. I'm not even tired or anything. Like I'm well rested and stuff. But just all right. Speedrun is made possible in part by Podbean. If you'd like to start a podcast of your own, get some of that sweet, sweet hosting, paid hosting, uh, with lots of extra perks and analytics and stuff, then why not help out the show in the process by going to podbean.com slash speedrun or using the code speedrun at checkout. In addition, Jazzy edits these episodes and makes them possible. And would you like to plug what you do? ClevelandAudioMixology.com Check it out. I'll edit your show and we'll get you up on Pop 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 Podbean. 
There we go. There's another air horn for this episode. I'm going to get an email about that stupid joke. Uh, yeah, no, I'll edit your podcast. We'll get it ready for Podbean. We'll get you all set up and you'll be toppling speed run in the charts quicker than you know it. And finally, speed run is presented by Stuff We Play. We're part of Stuff We Play. And if you'd like to support the show and even get episodes a week early, then why not support us via Patreon? Patreon.com slash Stuff We Play. We have a Discord server. You can find me at Twitter at Stuff We Play or the, the podcast on Twitter at Podcast Speedrun. Feel free to DM us or add us with episode ideas or even email Jazzy or I with your episode ideas at Jamie at StuffWePlay.com or Jazzy at StuffWePlay.com. But not so long, that, please don't forget to check out our sponsor, Podbean. Ooh, woo, please give this, sponsor money. This, this is the part where you go into the spiel. Okay, no, no, we're not doing that. Close the show, We're not please. doing that. Close. <laughs> All right, close it. Close so it. I have been Jamie. I have been Jazzy with the bad jokes. And we have also had a Layla. Hi. Bye. So with that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> I broke her. I did it. I broke her. Wrap it up. <laughs> Wrap it up. Next episode. <laughs> so, with that, thank you very much for listening. Stay classy and Baba Booey. That's not the correct ending. <laughs> oh, we, 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 hey, you. You a fish? Do you want to make a podcast? Well, I'll tell you what. Come no. on in. Fish Emporium. We'll make you a podcast right now. <laughs> Not a fish? We'll turn you into a fish. Free of charge! <laughs> They're like fishmen for the Dreamcast. <laughs> oh, fucking Seaman. Seaman. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seaman. Hello, and welcome to this week's giveaway, End Slate. We have four weeks of these left, and last week, I posed a question. What is your earliest gaming memory? And we got a good few entries. And remember, that was to win a PS4 copy of Immortals Phoenix Rising. Thanks again to Ubisoft Canada for providing the codes. Now, for those unfamiliar, basically how these giveaways work is that throughout the summer, I'm going to be posing questions at the end of these episodes. Uh, you email your responses to me at jamie at stuffweplay.com or, you know, just DM me via Discord, via the Stuff We Play Discord server. And yeah, and basically the answers that Jazzy and I like best wins. So this week's winner is JJ Landry, who sent me this response that I thought was actually really nice. So this is what she said. My earliest gaming memory is, at my first grade birthday party, the boys I invited over played Nintendo 64 instead of playing with all of us girls. But they were just very happy to just hunker down and have fun, and we watched them play for a bit. It was very cute. So, yeah, I think that's interesting as well, you know, showing those, I guess, childhood divisions between girl stuff and boy stuff, and, uh, it doesn't seem that's as much of a thing anymore. You know, I don't think games are just seen as a boy thing like they were predominantly in like the, the 90s and even into the early 2000s. But yeah, congrats JJ Landry for winning the PS4 code of Immortals. Uh, we're giving away one of two Nintendo Switch codes we have to give away this week. For these Nintendo Switch codes, you just redeem them via the Nintendo eShop on your Switch. And the question we've gone with this week is, what is a video game that you feel most people hate that you love and why. So basically guilty pleasures. What's a game that you love that seems like a lot of people hate and why? We actually did an episode talking about some of our thoughts on this questions with Jay's reviews a while back. Uh, I, I think we all agreed on Sonic Heroes being one for us. But anyways, I look forward to hearing your responses and coming back next week to pick another winner. Good night, y'all. <laughs>